Hello everyone, my name is Yael Granot and I will talk about our paper Quantifying QRS Changes During Myocardial Ischemia Insights from High Frequency Electrocardiography. Conventional ECG devices typically display signals with frequencies of up to 100 Hz and amplitudes of a few millivolts. However, many studies have shown that high frequency signals carry important diagnostic information. The high-frequency components of the ECG are mostly concentrated in the QRS complex and are often referred to as HFQRS. These signals are characterized by low amplitude, typically 100 times smaller than the low-frequency components of the QRS, so in order to view them, one needs to employ advanced signal processing techniques. Early studies clearly demonstrated the changes in HFQRS due to ischemia in dogs. The diagram on the left shows the significant changes in the high-frequency signal after occlusion of the LAD artery, while the conventional low-frequency signal is much slower to respond. It is interesting to note that reduced amplitude zones, or RAS, are developing. The high-frequency morphology index, HFMI, estimates the extent of RAS by computing the relative area of the basin in the HFQRS envelope. On the right, the basin is marked in yellow, and the ratio of the yellow area divided by the area under the red envelope is the HFMI. A study in humans undergoing angioplasty of the LAD artery confirmed the results in animal models. Reduction in the amplitude of the HFQRS could be observed during balloon inflation as a result of ischemia. The root mean square amplitude of the HFQRS in the example shown at the bottom right corner decreased from 4 microvolts to 2.3 microvolts during inflation. RAS is also seen at the mid-QRS segment marked by the red arrow. HFQRS can also be used during demand ischemia. By monitoring and analyzing the HFQRS during the stress phase of an exercise test, the evolution of ischemia can be detected with better accuracy compared to ST changes. In a normal subject, we expect to find a uniform level of HFQRS, but in a patient with coronary artery disease, demand ischemia would develop during the exercise, resulting in a significant reduction of the HFQRS amplitude. This characteristic trend line, which is depicted in red in figure B, is used for diagnosing coronary artery disease. These are conventional ECG results of a stress test showing the 12 lead view of a 65-year-old female. The black trace is an average signal from the peak exercise stage of the test and the blue trace is from the rest stage at the beginning of the test. Significant ST depressions appear in several leads. HyperQ, the HFQRS analysis algorithm used to analyze the same test presented in the previous slide, demonstrates a perfectly normal result with no positive leads. A study of almost 1,000 patients compared the accuracy of HFQRS analysis versus ST changes. It demonstrated an increase in the test sensitivity, correctly diagnosing 69% of patients with ischemia compared to the 39% sensitivity of conventional ECG while obtaining a slightly better specificity. The number of leads with significant HFQRS reduction is nicely correlated to the extent of ischemia as measured by myocardial perfusion imaging. This table summarizes the results of several stress ECG studies. The sensitivity of HyperQ is better than that of conventional ECG analysis without compromising specificity. An interesting study on the third line demonstrates comparable sensitivity but much better specificity of the HyperQ. The study population, women referred for angiography, is the reason for the high prevalence of coronary artery disease in this population. This study also highlights a known issue with stress ECG tests for women, a high rate of false positive results. It is clear that HyperQ does not suffer from this limitation. We'll conclude with an example from a resting ECG test. This slide shows the conventional ECG results from a 62-year-old female who presented to the emergency department with acute chest pain. The conventional ECG does not show any signs of acute myocardial infarction. However, this patient was ultimately diagnosed with non-ST elevation MI. HyperQ analysis from the same test shows signs of ischemia with six positive leads marked in red. This is another example of the potential of HFQRS to improve the results of ECG tests.